This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Hello, entrepreneurs. If you are looking to create a deeper connection with your customers and build an audience you can reach out to for new launches, product feedback, or simply to encourage repeat orders, then this episode is for you. Our guest today will share with us his process to attract users to your product, collect the, their emails, and convert them into loyal customers of your brand. To share his knowledge with us, we brought to the show Dr. Dr. Travis Ziegler, an optometrist turned e-commerce entrepreneur. He's the founder of I Love, whose mission is to heal one million dry eye sufferers naturally. Due to the success of I Love, making over 5.4 million in 2021, others have asked if Dr. Travis would help them grow their Amazon business, which led to the creation of the profitable Profitable Pineapple Ads Agency, uh, where he blogs about Amazon PPC and selling on Amazon. And he also has a free PPC masterclass, which you can find on uh, ProfitablePineapple.com. Hey, Travis, this is the second time to this show. Welcome back. Gian Marco, thanks for having me on. Excited to be here again. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So uh, you're a master of processes, so that's why you deserve a second time and probably we'll, we'll see each other again. Uh, here. So this last time we spoke about the 8020 of PPC. Now we're shifting gears to another topic, which is building an audience, which I know you are a, a big, a, a master of building audiences. And it's something that you preach uh, in, in every channels that you, uh, you speak. So uh, you, I know you've built a, a great process to build an audience. So why don't you uh, start before we dive deep into each steps? Why don't you just give us a, a general overview of this process? And then we'll dive deeper into into each step. Now, now you said I'm a master of processes, but the secret is I just am a master of like two to three. And that's how we've built our business to, to be where it is today is because we keep it incredibly simple. I think most entrepreneurs make things really complex. But to go back to your question, a broad overview of this topic on how to build an audience. And this is an, a, a process that we use to build 200 email leads per day in our brand. And then we use it to get about two to five emails per day for our agency. And difference is our brand has a lower ticket item. So $20 to $30, whereas our agency has a much higher ticket item, $1,500 minimum. And so two to five email leads is all I need a day. But 200 email leads a day for my brand works a lot better. So what we did is we create a landing page or a blog post. People kind of hear that landing page and they kind of get scared from it. But what we're going to do is just create more of like a blog post. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drive a lot of traffic to that blog post using things like Google ads and Facebook ads. And when they're on that blog post, we're then going to try to get their email. And so getting them onto a list. So capturing that email. And then the second reason they're on that blog post is we want them to buy on Amazon. And so we're going to send them to a landing page, get them to buy on Amazon, get their email address, remarket to them by sending them more emails. And then when you start doing this and do maybe one or two landing pages a, a week or a month, whatever is best for you, it just kind of creates this perpetual flywheel that just can't be stopped. And it creates this selling, selling machine that just goes on forever and ever. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's that's very interesting. So, are you you're, you're saying you're using a blog post as a lead magnet, or you also use uh, other lead magnets like eBooks and so on? Uh, how how do you go about that? Yeah, you can use other blog posts as a lead magnet, but what we also do is we have a coupon. So if we have fifty percent off an item at that time, that will be a lead magnet. So a fifty percent off coupon if it makes sense with the blog or the landing page. And then what we also do is we have like a book. So I wrote a book called free or excuse me. I wrote a book called rethinking dry eye treatment and it's a 200 page book. It's a real paperback book. We gave that away for free, a PDF version of it and an audible version of it. And so we'd give that away for free because most of the people landing on our blog had some kind of pain. And so really focusing the lead magnet around a pain or a problem that your product solves. And so if you can solve that problem with a lead magnet, you're more likely to get the opt-in. And so I'll give you a couple more examples just to make it clear. For the agency, we give away a free Amazon PPC masterclass. And so it's 
an A to Z, how to do Amazon PPC. We discussed it a little bit on the last episode, but we do the, a whole masterclass for free because I know people that are reading the blogs on my blog that they are in the Amazon selling space and they usually need PPC help. And so we have a free masterclass that does that. But then that also ties into what we do, which is we also do Amazon PPC for, for individuals. So just make sure it's around a problem that your product solves like a book. It can be as simple as a one-page PDF guide, a coupon, or a masterclass or something like that. All right, cool, cool. So you start basically by creating a, a lead magnet or a blog post, right? So what would be the, the the process to create a blog post? Is it similar, I guess, to to create a lead magnet, right? Because you're using you're using basically a blog post as a lead magnet, right? So what can be some suggestions we can give that to, to people to create like a blog post that uh, you know will attract people, um, then after will will drive traffic to to it. Yeah, that's a great question. So you want to be able to make a blog post around a problem that your product solves. So most people, when you're doing Amazon PPC, and even when you're doing Google ads, they're focused on product-based keywords. A product-based keyword, an example of that would be eyelid wipes. I sell eyelid wipes. When somebody's searching for eyelid wipes, my product will show up on Amazon and hopefully they'll buy our eyelid wipes. But when you're focusing around a blog post, nobody cares about eyelid wipes. You can write an article about the five best eyelid wipes, but it's going to be a little bit more expensive to do that because it's a product-based keyword. When we focus on the problem-based keyword, it's going to be lower cost per click, cheaper clicks, more to your blog. So an example of that, eyelid wipes help with blepharitis. Blepharitis is just a fancy word for eyelid inflammation. And so if we make an article around blepharitis, and then target blepharitis keywords, then people are gonna come over to our blog, read information about blepharitis, and then how our eyelid wipes solve that problem. So it's almost like an advertorial where we're advertising on Google around blepharitis, sending them to a blog that's around blepharitis. So what is blepharitis? What causes blepharitis? Three simple ways to help with blepharitis. And one of those is gonna be our product, eyelid wipes. Maybe number two is our product too. Maybe number three is our product. With us, we have enough products that we can make one, two, and three our products. So number one is eyelid wipes. Number two is a warm compress. Number three is hypochlorous acid. And so we talk about all those products and how they help. And then we have them link over to Amazon. And so that's kind of the simplest way to make a blog post. One of my favorite ways is to do listicles. A listicle is just an odd number at the front, a superlative word like best, worst, simple, and then focusing around that keyword. So let me give you another example. Three best blepharitis treatments. Very simple. And then again, that structure of that blog article would be what is blepharitis, what causes it? Three best blepharitis treatments. Of course, you have to be careful with FDA structure function claims if you're in the US and probably in Europe as well, but um, not FDA, of course, but whatever managing government branch you guys have there. And you just gotta be careful of what you say. Like you can't say your product directly treats something unless you're approved for it. So, um, but that's just a, a brief summary of how you create a pretty simple blog. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's smart. And I've also heard that, you know, people uh, insert uh, Amazon associates the links, right? To, to these listicles, like uh, the 10 best products for, for this, for example. And, and uh, you, you might list your products uh, among those plus, you know, some other products that might not be competitors, but are you know similar products that people might look for and uh, you can you can use like a, an amazon associates link so you make basically affiliate commissions and uh, some people ac actually use that also for uh, judging whether that product might be might, might be a, a good new product to launch right have you have you ever done something like that that's exactly how we grew our business so um we had one product that was around blepharitis and then we had, you know, another five products on our page. And so for our products, we use Amazon attribution links, which is Amazon's program where they give you 10% back. So it's a little better than associates, but for other people's products, we use the Amazon associates link, which is Amazon's affiliate program. And you get, you know, two to 4%. And then what we noticed was what product is being sold the second most, our product being sold the most second most product next. That's our next product we're coming out with. And then we can replace in that article with that, that product.
Yeah, that's awesome. I love this strategy. I'm really looking forward to to try it as well. I'm I'm in in the phase of, of writing. You know, my VAs are helping me write um, like a, a, new blogs and and landing pages. So that's gonna be one of my next can I, uh, strategies. Can I give to try. you a Can I give you a blog writing hack? <laughs> For sure, I'd love to. Yeah, please. Um, so we used to have VAs, um, and we've hired VAs from the Pakistan, from the Philippines, from the UK, from Canada, from the US. We've hired VAs to write from everywhere. Nothing beats now AI. AI is simple. They it will write you a whole 500 to 1,000 page article in literally five minutes. And it's better than any VA I've ever had. And so um, Jasper.ai is the popular one right now. We're using Word Hero. Um, the only reason we're using Word Hero is because it's a lot less expensive than Jasper. And you can actually go to a, a service called AppSumo.com. If you've never heard of it, it's great. It's where you pay a one-time fee for softwares for life. And we paid a one-time fee for Word Hero of $150, and we have it for life. And so to give you an example, Jasper is like $50 a month. So um, both are great. Jasper is probably the best, but Word Hero is pretty good too. Wow. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Actually, it was kind of in my in my list, to-do list to check out, you know, and, and try these AI engines. But uh, I've, I've heard like great things. So definitely, uh, it's, it's a great tip. So then like, what is the next step after we have set up our blog post? And actually, sorry, I'm curious to ask you first, uh, are you using any tools to find the keywords that you, you mentioned before that we're going to target and, and put into our blog post? What's the, yeah, what's the tool? That's, that's a great question. So um, eyelid wipes was our product-based keyword. Blepharitis was our problem-based keyword. But I know the eyelid wipes also help with blepharitis, dry eye, styes, my bombing gland dysfunction, all of that. So how do I pick the best keyword to, to start out with? So I'll actually go to key Google Keyword Planner and you can get access to Keyword Planner if you've paid a dollar to Google. So just you know, start an ad, run it for a day, spend five bucks and then get access to it. And you can also use other tools, but that, one, that one's free essentially. And what I do is I put all those problem-based keywords into Google and when we hit get results, what happens is it tells me the average monthly search volume for all those keywords. It tells you if there's a low or high competition on Google for those keywords. And then it also tells you around the range of the bid you're going to pay. And so what I'm looking for is high search volume with low competition. Makes sense, right? High, high search volume, low competition. Because when um, in Google Keyword Planner, the competition score says low or high. That's actually how many people are actually bidding on that keyword. And so that's what that competition means. So high search volume, low competition, and then a low cost per click. The lowest cost per click I'm getting right now is two cents per click to a blog post. Um, my blog post that I've scaled, we're spending about $120 a day on it. Um, we're, we're spending about six cents a click. And we're getting about an eight ROAS on that article. So this process does work. Um, it's just a matter of dialing it in. And I always tell people that out of the 10 blogs that you write, one will do really, really, really well. Three will do okay. And then the rest of them will just kind of do, uh, we'll probably turn them off. So don't be afraid to fail. Wow, that's that's a great cost per click, actually. I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. um, do you, Can you share also uh, what percentage roughly, just to give us a ballpark of people that click into the ad and you know read the article, go through the article, actually will leave the the review. So sorry, so leave the their email. I mean, or click on the on the product. Yeah, so it should be around two to three percent. That's that's pretty typical. Um, just because most these are articles that people are doing research on. These aren't articles that people are trying to buy on. And so you're educating them on a condition or a problem that they have. And so getting them to go over and buy might be a little tough at first, but two to 3% is good. And the thing is, it, it, don't be discouraged by that. Follow the ROAS numbers. So worry about the new and the revenue versus what you're spending is what you should be focusing on, not just the conversion rate, because you're trying to send external traffic to Amazon. And then you can watch the conversion rate because then if you make some tweaks and it goes up and that's a good thing, but we mostly watch the revenue that's generated. Okay. Okay. Got it. And so, so then what's the next step? We, we will basically drive traffic to this blog post, right? So what, is, what are your best, you know, advice to setting up 
effective Google ads and, uh, you know, make them convert as much as possible. Okay. So we've made the blog post around blepharitis. We've created a lead magnet around blepharitis. Let's just call it rethinking blepharitis treatment. That lead magnet pops up as like an exit intent. They get their email address and then we're trying to get them to buy over on Amazon. Now we need to get traffic to the listing. So when you're creating a Google ad, Google ads has actually made this incredibly simple now. It used to be a little more complex and the, the system that I actually made you know, a year ago is completely different than the system today because Google's made so many changes and Google's made it a lot easier. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a search campaign and we're gonna maximize for clicks is key. We can't do conversions because conversions would be buying on Amazon and we don't have that Amazon data. You can do this for your Shopify store too and actually have that data, but that's not what we did. We did it for selling on Amazon. So we're doing a search campaign, maximizing for clicks, and then we wanna use those keywords that we discovered. So in the example that I've been giving the whole episode, blepharitis, we're gonna bid on a phrase and exact match for that keyword. Don't do broad, broad is way too broad for Google. Um, we just do phrase and exact match. And that's essentially it. And then you create the, the ad and just make sure you fill out. They like to have 15 headlines just because it's, 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 it's tedious. But going back to the, um, the AI, Jasper.ai or Word Hero, you know, you can use those to build your headlines out in Google Ads. And I actually use them quite a bit now because usually I can come out with about five to 10 headlines and one or two descriptions that are pretty good. And then you just kind of hit a writer's block because you're like, what else could I write about this? And that's where a tool like Jasper.ai or Word Hero comes in, the AI, because it will give you more ideas. And so then you can write more. So with Google Ads, you'll write the ad. And then there's some add-ins that you can do with Google Ads now. You can add an image to it. You can add um, different, they're called dynamic keywords. And so whatever the person's searching, it will actually pop up. But the reason we only go after two keywords, the phrase and exact match, is because we want our ad to be as close to the keywords as possible because your click-through rate is going to be really high then. And the higher your click-through rate, the cheaper your Google Ads is. So we've driven over 600,000 clicks this year in 2022. And our average cost per click is 17 cents to our blog. And so that's a significant volume for a low, low, low cost. And then of course, the cheaper clicks you get or the, the higher click-through rate you get for Google, the more they're going to serve your ads because the click-through rate is so high. You can think of click-through rate on Google is equal to conversion rate on Amazon. The higher your conversion rate, the more Amazon's going to show you. The higher your click-through rate on Google, the more Google's going to show you. So that's pretty much it. The Google Ads is incredibly simple. It's, it's a very simple process. Search campaign, maximize clicks, phrase an exact match for that keyword around the problem that your product solves, and then a simple ad. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's cool. I got lots of questions about this. So, uh, first of all, you said it's you're basically creating just a, a one keyword campaigns, right? That that has exact and phrase match. Is that right? Yep. Single keyword ad campaigns. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So then you you basically run multiple campaigns with just one keyword, and then you know op optimize each individually. If you saw my Google ads count, you'd laugh. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, it's full full of ads, basically. Yeah, hundreds of ads, yep. obviously, for each keyword. Okay, cool. Okay, that's interesting. Then you're you're saying you're um I'm I'm curious about the bid. Is it a fixed bid or there is um, you know, the the Google engine that adjusts the bid? I don't remember the the exact name that Google gives to this. So this was this is what's changed over the past year is Google made this a lot better. So we used to do a fixed bid. And we'd have to play with it to figure out what that bid was. But now with the maximize click feature on Google, it makes it a lot easier. So you don't have to worry about the bid. You just pick maximize clicks. And then when you're playing with your budget, it will actually show you when you're making your Google ad, how many clicks per day that they're expecting you to get. And so you can play with the budget up and down to, to figure out how many clicks you're going to get. But the goal with maximize click campaigns is Google is going to try to maximize your clicks. They're going to try to get as many clicks to your blog or wherever you're sending it as possible. And so maximize clicks. Then later on, if we're unprofitable, well, then we then can put a maximum cost per click on there. And so instead of just letting Google pay whatever it wants to, we can actually lower that click. And so we can say, Google, don't go above 20 cents. And then it will never go above 20 cents after that. But at the beginning, we start out with a $5 a day budget. 
and we do maximum cost per click or maximum clicks, sorry, maximum clicks, because then it sends as much traffic for that $5 as it can. Okay. Okay. Got it. And uh, Google gives kind of a score, like a, an ad score, right? To the, to the, to the ad uh, saying it's a medium high or something like that. I don't remember the exact term they use. So the, the better the ad is, the more th they will show it. Right. So you mentioned that there are like 15 headlines. So you're, uh, can you, can you use also AI in that for those headlines or mm -hmm. Um, is that what you what you said before? You you were using AI on like Jasper or Word Hero for yeah. for those headlines. Yeah. Yeah. So I usually write five to ten of the headlines myself, but they want fifteen, so I get writer's block after a little while. Mm. So then I'll use an AI to then help me out with that to help write even more. And the AI is incredible. It it works incredibly well. I've written a children's book with it. I haven't released the children's book. I just wanted to see if it could write a children's book, and it was actually a really good children's book. I was like, this is a good book. And so you can pretty much tell it to do anything and it will do it. So, um, yeah, don't be afraid to use the tools at your exposure or that you have access to, to, to help make your job easier. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to, to start trying it. So if we're running, a, um, an ad that it's, uh, that targets, you know, to create, um, to, to, you know, give us as many clicks as possible, it means that we need to have a very, uh, optimized landing page or blog right um so what are st some of the tips that you you have found to you know increase the conversion rate and also uh we, we can uh, we can talk about the the pop-up that you use to to collect emails right because we want to collect as many emails as possible after we pay for that click right so how 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 do we go about that yeah. So with the landing page, you just want to focus around that keyword and make sure that everything's congruent, meaning that the keywords that you're advertising for are very congruent or look like the ad that you're serving. And then when they click through that ad to go to your blog posts or your landing page, make sure that that is all the same. So bluff write us, bluff write us on the ad, bluff write us is all what the article is all about. It's when there's an incongruency in there, that's when everything is going to go downhill. So that's why I do single keyword ad campaigns. That's why I focus these blog articles around one problem. And another key point is if you want to focus on the sale a little bit more, push your products up towards the top of the article. So I've seen both of them work, long form articles where it talks about what is blepharitis, what causes blepharitis, three blepharitis treatments, and then our products are down there. But if you move that up to the top, the three blepharitis treatments and put it at the top, that tends to increase your conversion rate as far as making a sale. And so don't be afraid to do that. And the key thing is just, you got to test. Every market is different. We're doing this for over 15 clients now. And some clients, we just can't get the strategy to work. And so you have to just keep trying and keep testing. And other clients, it's working like gangbusters. We're getting 10 ROAS on some clients. And so it's something that really, really works. You just have to keep going and keep testing and test different things on the landing page. But I personally love treating my landing page more like a blog post versus like a landing page that most people think of when they think of typical landing page. So I love to, to be more of a blog post and to educate, focus on giving first, and then you will receive at the end. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Totally agree. And that blog post, it sits in just in the, in your website, right? It's not like a landing yep. page that it's a, uh, a standalone page, right? Yeah, so we have blogs. Uh, the blog that we did for our brand was on our website. And then the ones that we do for our clients is we have three specialty blogs, one around healthcare, one around home, one around office. And then depending on what they they sell will depend on which blog it goes on. So it can be an independent website that you make, or you can just put it on your own blog. Okay, cool. Yeah, totally. Uh, all right. So if you say that uh, one specific, you, you run the the ad on one specific keyword for one blog you know everything has to be congruent do you change do you do, do you make slight changes to you make like different versions of the blog depending on the on the keyword or you basically have like two or three keywords i don't know how many for each blog and you just simply like create more and more blogs for so many, we do both. different keywords yeah. yeah, so we do both. So you can um, do different articles. So like blepharitis, if you can imagine, it gets spelled wrong a lot. And so we did one article that was on the misspelling because it gets so many searches per month. 
And then we made that blog post around that misspelling. So that was one example, just because that, that misspelling was so high. But then we could write the same article about dry eye. And so instead of blepharitis, it now says dry eye because blepharitis and dry eye go hand in hand. And so now we're sending dry eye traffic to a different blog post that's all about dry eye. And, but it's the same article because the products are used the same. We're going to do everything that we do the same. And so you can definitely use that same article, but just copy it over and over again to test out different keywords. And another example, so with styes, we had an article, how to get rid of a sty overnight, because that was searched a lot. How to get rid of a sty fast was searched a lot. So we did both of those articles, same article. We just changed overnight to fast. That was it. And then there's we, we, we've written like 20 articles on styes because there's so many keywords around it. But yeah, you can just repeat the same article over and over again with different variations of the keyword to then send the blog post to. Now, if you don't want to go through all that work, keep it simple. Just focus on the main keyword that's driving all the traffic. So there's going to be one main keyword, and then you're going to get a bunch of seed keywords off of it, just like on Amazon when you're doing keyword research. It's the same thing with Google and creating blogs. Cool, cool. But I'm, I'm wondering, are these uh, all these ver different versions of the article are all published? Because, you know, if people go on, in your, on your blog just, you know, from your website without... Uh, the ad, you know, they will find maybe the same, the same blog posts, you know, with just a few different uh, keywords. So I, I guess, are, are they all published or you, you give them private just for the, for the ad? You can do both. Um, we, we publish them all because what we found is most people don't just go search a blog. Um, they either land on the blog or they land from, from an ad or from SEO. They don't really just go and explore the blog. But yeah, you can definitely hide them. And so they won't show up on SEO or they won't show up. I, won't, I would re recommend always having them show up on SEO. But if you don't want, you can hide them from your blog. You can just say, I don't want this to show up in the blog navigation area. But you're still going to get visitors to it from SEO because eventually your article will rank as a result of this strategy. Right, right. Okay, cool. That's great. Guys, remember that uh, we, will, we have always in every episode... Uh, and um, downloadable material that it's uh, complementary to the to, to the episode. So remember, go to thesellerprocess.com and find this episode. You will find the link in the show notes or in the description of the YouTube video. You will you will download a guide basically with the with the full process uh, that we are discussing today with even more details. Okay, so you'll find it at thesellerprocess.com or in the YouTube video. All right, so. Um, I'm just wondering about the the pop up. Um, how do you create a high converting pop up? Because we want to get as many emails as possible once people reach, uh, you know, land on our blog. So, what do you say about that? What's your suggestion? Yes. Yeah. So I talked about it a, a little bit before, but just focusing around that problem that your product solves is the key thing. So the examples I gave was they're on my blepharitis blog. The pop up is going to be you know, peak curiosity. And so the five things that you're not doing for blepharitis and that kind of piques their curiosity. Well, what are the five things I'm not doing? I have blepharitis. So what am I not doing? So they're going to put their email address in to get that one page PDF. Another example is on my agency blog. It's an Amazon, a free Amazon PPC masterclass. If you sell a, if you're on a wealth blog, five money mistakes you're making today. So peak that curiosity, get them to put an email address in. And that's the key thing is people are curious. They want to know what they're missing. And so that's the same thing with your headlines when you're writing those is you want to kind of summon that to make people get curious on what they're missing. And so that's what I recommend with that, that pop-up. Okay. Okay. That's great. So th th this is how everything connects. Basically, there is always a blog post and then there is a lead magnet, like an ebook or a checklist, something like that, that people can download from a pop-up. You know, maybe if they're uh, trying to exit the blog, they will they will see the this pop-up or, or maybe after X uh, seconds or minutes, they will, yep. they will see this pop up and download that. Okay, cool. And then they will receive an email flow, right? So how do you set up the email flow? Just give a, a quick, a quick example of how, how can we create an email flow? So yeah, quick rundown of email flow is the first email you want to do the giveaway, whatever they ask for the masterclass, the bluff cheat sheet, the dry eye cheat sheet, the rethinking dry eye book, whatever it is, put that in the email. 
And then also when they put the, when the pop-up comes up and they put their email address in, have a, th- a little thank you page or a thank you pop that says, check your email right away to make sure you got it. And so that way that triggers them to go check the email right away to open it instead of getting lost, you know, an hour later. So give away whatever they ask for and then tell them a little bit about yourself. That's kind of email one. My call to action in email one is to reply to this email. Reply to this email about something. The second email I send the next day is where I came from. So why did I come out with this product? And then I also ask them to reply to that email. And then the third one is what do you do? So what are the things that I do? So in my agency, we're an Amazon PPC agency. How did we come to do that? What was our epiphany moment? Call to action is a reply to this email. The fourth email is how do you do it for me? So what are the services we offer or what are the products that we offer? And then the call to action again is ask for the buy. So send them over to Amazon to buy, apply to work with us here. And then after that, we ask them to follow us on our platforms. And then I always give credit to where I learned everything. And so you'll see who my mentor was in the Amazon PPC space or in the dry eye space. And then they just get entered into our drip sequence. And so the the sequence that we send out every week, every month, um, every three days, whatever your cadence is, I recommend more frequently. And whenever you create this blog post, you can add it to that drip sequence. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, that looks great. Sounds great. And obviously, you know, people can find lots of uh, information specifically about this because, you know, we could we could have a, an episode maybe about email sequences and That's flows. Good. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. So I think we had a, a really value-packed episode already and we're almost running out of time. So I have for you uh, my last question. What is your best advice to achieve more with less when it comes to building an audience on Amazon? So if you got kind of befuddled or kind of like overwhelmed with this strategy, make one simple landing page that can drive a lot of traffic and that's it. Don't have to overwhelm yourself. As you can imagine, we have over 50 clients doing this for every client every week would be very intense. So we try to find the best keywords that drive the most traffic and we focus on optimizing that one article and really trying to get it to work. And so just really focus on the one or two things that will really drive your business forward. And with this strategy, it's the same thing. There's millions of keywords out there. Focus on the big ones that will make the biggest difference. And then as you build your audience, your your business becomes pretty much invincible. You can't be stopped once you start building and catering to your audience. Awesome. Yeah, sounds great. So uh, thank you again, uh, Travis. Uh, you, You mentioned you are helping uh, several people with this strategy. How can people find you and uh, what, how can you help them? Yeah, thanks for letting me do this. Um, profitablepineapple.com is our website. You can There's an application form on that homepage. Also, we have a free course. I know you're going to put it in the description around the strategy that we talked about today. And that's on that webpage as well. So profitablepineapple.com. You can find it there and apply to work with us. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you again, uh, Travis, for for sharing your knowledge with us. I'm sure we will meet again in another episode. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah. So guys, um, remember the key to success is to emulate the best. So take home the insights that Travis just shared with us, you know, go download the the free the free um, course that we have at the sellerprocess.com. You will find the, the links in the show notes or in the YouTube video description. So have a, a nice, now it's your time to, to take action and implement these insights. And until the next time, uh, have a productive week. Hey, entrepreneurs, I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something from the interview. If you're serious about creating systems for your business, automating processes and building up your team so that you can transfer the tedious daily tasks in order to focus on more high level strategic tasks and work on your business and not in your business. I've created a guide for Amazon sellers named Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs that you can find at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook, where you will learn how to leverage systems and SOPs in your Amazon business so that you can accomplish more by working less, optimize your time, automate and delegate tasks, and reap the benefits of being a true business owner and not simply an operator in your own business.
Go download the ebook at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook and start implementing all the tips and insights that I share with you. And leave us a review or a comment to let us know how, how the content we are sharing here is making an impact in your business. And have a productive week.